Hey guys, how's it going? Kermode here. In this part of our beginner Ableton course video series, I'm going to show you guys what pretty much every important parameter does inside of Ableton. At this point, I've kind of showed you where the windows are, how the main windows work, how to bring sounds in, and how to start programming drums and melodies. But I'm sure so much of what you're looking at is still a total mystery. So this one's not going to be as much of a how-to tutorial as it is, this is what this does, this is what this does. So get your pen and paper out. This is going to be a hell of a lot of information. And again, if you guys have yet to download the Beginner Ableton Starter Sample Pack, make sure to grab it in the description of this video. It has all the essentials you're going to need to take these ideas and actually write music. So we've got a lot to cover in this video. Without further ado, let's get going. So I'm actually going to start with the top left of Ableton here. The first is a link on and off button. And what this actually allows you to do with it on, it'll actually allow you to link to other Abletons and allow each other to sync up and write music or perform music together. To the right of that, you have a tap tempo button. And what this does is I can tap in a tempo here, but, but, and Ableton will actually tell me what that tempo was, which leads us to the next thing. This is your timing, your tempo in beats per minute. So if my tempo is 140 beats per minute and I hit play and I turn on this metronome, or let's slow it down. And you can actually do decimal values as well if you want something to be 85.56 beats per minute if you want to get that specific for whatever reason. To the right of that, you have phase you have nudge buttons, and what this does is it'll actually kind of just push the timing forward or backward, which is going to be really good. If you're playing with external gear or music and you're a little off, like say you had two Abletons going there, not using the same source for some reason, one ended up being slightly faster for whatever reason, you quickly nudge it along. Or if you're playing with someone who's got turntables and you want to speed up your Abletons to slow down the turntable, you can kind of give it a little boost. Next, you have the time signature here, so you can write your music in different time signatures. So, for example, if I wanted to, I could write my music in 7-4. By default, it's set to 4-4, four, four, and most standard music that, you'll, that you've heard is in 4-4, four, four, and most music that you'll probably want to write as a beginner will be 4-4 four, four there. Next, you have a metronome, which clearly is a metronome but what's also super useful from the drop down menu here is you can actually change both the rhythm as well as a count in and as well as the sound and the count in what it allows you to do is if you're going to record you can give yourself one bar one two three four record so it gives you some time to actually prepare as a player Next to that, you have your quantize, and we talked about this in a previous video. This is going to launch clips in time to your quantize, whatever you want it to be. Now, over here, you have a follow button, and what this does is if you had a clip going on your arrangement, and we zoomed way in and we pressed play, you'll see that it actually followed with the screen. Now here you can actually see displayed what time your little scrubber is right here. So it's at 14, 4, 1. So this is in bars, beats, and sixteenths. And if you want, you can actually move that. And that's where your Ableton's going to start from the next time you hit play. Alternatively, you can just click as well. You have your play, stop, and record buttons. Something you should know by now based off our previous videos. And then you have a MIDI overdub button. And what will happen is if we were to hit record right now, the MIDI would actually record over this existing MIDI. You'll see it actually took over it. With the overdub button on, it'll actually add to it instead of actually take over. So see both clips kind of happened at the same time there. If I undid that, we didn't delete anything. We just added to it, we overdubbed. Next, you have an automation arm button. Now, I've actually never talked about automation yet, and this is gonna be something in a later video, but what automation is, is it allows you to play parameters musically over time. What do I mean by this? Well, let's say, for example, we wanted the volume of our guitar here to actually increase over time. 
Now you can do what's known as automate, and I'll quickly do that, where I can create this change over time. Or you can actually record that in by hitting this, recording, turning this arm off so we don't overdo the notes, and then moving this. See how it moved the volume for me? Had the track been armed, it would have also recorded uh, MIDI notes, which I didn't want. That's why I turned it off. See if I change this. The notes are gone as well. So that's why I did that. But with this button, it'll record automation, which is pretty handy. I'm going to quickly undo that, though, because I don't want the volume to change over time. And if you're still a little confused by that concept, don't worry. We're going to be going into it in a lot more detail in later videos. Now the next button is a re-enable automation where if I actually do automate again and then I were to move this parameter, it actually overrides it temporarily and I can undo that essentially with that orange arrow. Now there's this really cool button up here called the capture button. If I just grab a different instrument for a second to demonstrate this and I was jamming out ideas. And say I forgot to record, but I really liked my idea. Well, hit this capture button. And it'll take your last set of ideas and actually turn it into a little clip for you. That is one of my favorite parts of Ableton 10. So like, oh, I want to jam. I don't want the pressure of recording. And I liked that. Capture. There it is we can see it there down in our clip. So that's a really handy button. Beside that, you have the session record button, where if you remember correctly, that's gonna create a little clip here. And we have a clip in session view, which we can then bring over to arrangement view. Next over here, you have all your different loop settings. And what you can do, you can see these little loop brackets up top here. You could extend them to the size you want, hit loop, and now your arrangement view will actually loop a certain section. So this is going to loop for us now, which is pretty useful. Now that's all pretty useful, but what's even cooler about this is if you wanted to record, and you only wanted to record for the length of a loop bracket, and then stop recording, because if I hit record here to warm up to start recording here, I'd record over all this and I'd lose it. Well, what you can do is you can set a punch in and punch out bracket. And what this means is it will only start recording once it hits the loop. And if punch out is off, it'll stop recording afterward. You'll have to turn the loop off, however, because if it loops, it'll loop. But if punch in and punch out is on and I hit record, it'll start recording here. Play a bunch of ideas. And then it stops once it hits the punch out. So that's pretty handy if you want to just record in a certain section of the song as well. So the loop brackets kind of work as a double function where it can loop a section or it can dictate where the punch in and punch outs are for recording, which is really, really useful. Now, on the right here, we have a pencil function, which we've never looked at before. And this pencil function is a multi-purpose tool that works for automation to draw based off your grid size or for MIDI to draw based off your grid size. So this can be kind of cool for really quickly dialing in patterns because sometimes it's too time consuming to double click and get the exact length. So you can set your grid size and then pencil in ideas like that. So this pencil tool is kind of like a fast way to input ideas inside of Ableton. I find it quite useful. To the right of that, you have this key function. And what I was telling you earlier is it allows you to play your computer keyboard as an actual essentially MIDI keyboard allows you to play notes on your computer keyboard with this off it's not going to do anything unfortunately next the button beside that is a key map mode and what this is and this is really cool is it allows you to actually apply a computer keyboard command to anything you see that's orange so for example if I wanted to I could set the metronome on and off to be assigned to my letter A on my keyboard. So what you do is you click something 
and then you assign it to a key by pressing the key. So I'm going to assign my quantize change to be one bar or to, to be W. And you'll see them appear in this window here. You simply click the key again to go away. Now we have a problem where this key function where my keyboard is a piano is overriding this. So what I have to do is turn off that and then you'll see when I hit A, my metronome toggles on here. And when I press W, I pick different quantized times here. And this will apply to anything that you see as orange inside of Ableton. That's really cool. Now to the right of that is that on a whole other level, and this is MIDI mapping. And what this allows you to do is if you have a MIDI controller of some sort, you can actually assign different buttons or knobs to your MIDI controller. I'm not going to go into too much depth about that in this video, but if you have a MIDI controller, I recommend looking up different tutorials on this topic so you can look how to map your MIDI controller to your MIDI keyboard. It's going to be that button to actually engage that. And next you have a CPU percent here. And what this does is the more instruments and sounds you have going in Ableton, you can see how hard this is on your computer. It's using about 5% of my processing at most, so I'm not too worried right now. But if some sessions start to crackle and bag out, check this little percent because maybe you're at like 90, 95 and Ableton starting to kind of fail on you. Now here's where you toggle between arrangement view and session view. We've looked at this several times. You can also press tab if you want to quickly toggle between these two views as well. Now down at the bottom here, you have these different functions which are going to open different hidden windows inside of your mixer view here. Your mixer being what happens to the right in arrangement view to the right on a track or on session view what's happening below your clips on a track. So the first one is the IO. This is the in and out toggling and this will allow you to pick the in and out settings for different tracks. And how it works is if you're going to record something, you actually pick that input here. We have a whole video in this intro course on how to record. So don't worry too much about it, but this is where you route the input as well as the output. And by default, all tracks will go to the master if they're going, if they're single tracks or if they're in a group, which is something we haven't talked about before. But if you right click, you can actually group tracks. So they're kind of in a, a parent track. They'll actually go to that group. So their audio will go to that group. If I drop the guitar in here, the guitar's audio goes to the group there. So that's kind of a quick look at groups. And that's how audio routing works. Now below that you have your mixer and that's this M here. If you're not seeing that, it's because you don't have any mixers. If you don't see your mixer, it's because of this toggle. Now you have a volume slider here for each individual track, which is the same as the volume right here. You'll also notice that the inputs and outputs are the same. You have peak meters, so we can read the loudest point of our sound. Simply click it to reset it. You have a panning knob, which allows you to move your sound either to the left or right ear by dominant. And you can actually change that here as well. You have an on and off switch. So with it off, you can see the audio is there, but we're not hearing it. You have a solo button. So if another track was being heard, it would solo it and the others would be muted. You have a track arm where if you wanted to play a track, you would need that arm, something we've looked at before. And don't forget, you can have more than one track armed at a time. Now, this little D opens up a track delay, which will actually allow you to push a uh, sound back or forward if it's kind of dragging or it doesn't fit your timing of your song right. You can actually push it forward or back a little bit. But I'm actually going to hide that because I think it's not something we need right now. And you actually have this X which will open up a crossfader for DJing. And I'm not going to go into that right now either. But you do actually have the ability to crossfade between tracks in Ableton, which is pretty handy. I'm going to hide that as well. 
Now I skipped over this S and R because what these are are send and return tracks. And send and return tracks actually work differently than regular tracks because you can actually send audio. So a return is a track that you kind of send a bit of audio to and it typically has an effect on it. It doesn't have a MIDI clip or anything like that. So I'm gonna insert, I'm gonna insert a return track and I'm gonna take my guitar and watch what happens as I send it to this send. See how it's audio is equally here as well now? So what you can do with this is you can put separate effects on these return channels. So the little S shows the send amount and the R actually sh hides these return tracks. I'm gonna delete it for now, but sends and returns are there. Now on the track itself, you have the clips here, which you can double click to input, and they have their individual play buttons, which you can see their actual timing of the loop here. And then they have stop buttons at the bottom. You can also rename up tracks up top. by right clicking and pressing rename or command R for short. Now when you click a clip, you have a bunch of different settings down here. And I'm gonna do a whole video on the clips view, so don't worry, I'm not gonna overwhelm you too much with that right now. Now, one thing we haven't looked at previously is over here on the master channel, you have a mixer as well with panning and volume, but you also have scenes and what scenes do is they will trigger all the clips in a single scene. So if I were to add a hi-hat here, a hi-hat here, and I trigger a scene, notice how all these are triggering. If I click another scene, notice how it also triggers the stop buttons on those tracks. So this allows you to take ideas and put them into kind of more of an arrangement, a sequence, and then trigger scenes to play full song sequences. So this is pretty useful. So that's what these numbers are here. They're the correlating scenes to the different tracks. You also have a master stop button here, which will stop all the tracks, which is really handy. Now we've already looked at all the browser stuff here in the original video. We know that this here is our info view and there's actually no buttons here. And then our clips and devices view is all something that you're going to be seeing more of in later videos. So actually that's it because arrangement view is pretty much a copy of the session view. It only has a couple minor differences. The first is this automation button here, which we're going to go into more when we look at the automation video at a later time. And that's actually all we're gonna cover because we've already looked at all these windows, the browser window, the info view, clips view is gonna be a whole video to itself, and arrangement view is just pretty much session view turned on its side. They have the same parameters here. So that's it. It's actually not too much. Once you get, a, once you understand that each track is actually just kind of the same parameters set up and arrangement view is the same as session view, there aren't too many. There's the buttons up here and the buttons over here. So that actually gives you an, a full overview of all the different parameters we haven't previously looked at that won't get videos to themselves. So I hope that helped you kind of figure out a few different settings you weren't 100% sure about. I know it's probably a lot to take in. You may have to watch this video a few times, but there it is. That's everything for you. So thanks again, guys. Go download my free sample pack in the description of this video if you haven't already. If you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment, maybe share it with a friend. That would help a lot. And uh, just thanks. My name is Kermode. I appreciate it. Peace.